What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and we have the first FPI rankings for the upcoming 2023 college football season. I'm going to show you the top 45 teams, give you my reaction. Definitely some surprises here. I looked into these rankings and how they are calculated and they give you several different things. They look at returning production, recruiting rankings, and I think a big thing that I guess it makes sense, but they look at the last three years with an emphasis on the last season uh, to, to gauge how good these teams are. So they do look back at the past. And, you know, that I think works for some teams like Alabama, Ohio State, Georgia, because you know they're going to be good every year, despite maybe not having as much returning production, things like that. But at the same time, it doesn't always work because there could be a team that the, was not great the last few years, but they were, they've been getting better and better. And this year, they're going to be really good or a team that's been really good and they lost their coach, you know, you know, I don't think you can, I don't th think you should put too much weight into the last three years, but uh, that was something that they listed there. And again, a returning production, recruiting rankings. They also talked about, uh, if you read the article or read all this, you can see that transfer players only get like half the weight of a returning player, which really doesn't make sense because if it's a guy that played last season and he's going to play on this, on the new team, uh, I would would like to look at all of that production coming back because it could be even an up, it could be an upgrade it could be an upgrade so uh, that really just doesn't make a lot of sense but this these are the rankings let's just get to them and we start at the top Ohio State at number one and a pretty good gap between the Buckeyes and Alabama at number two Georgia is at three LSU at four Texas at number five. Michigan at number six, USC at seven, Clemson at eight, and Notre Dame at number nine. So we'll start with Ohio State at the top. Uh, this does surprise me. Uh, you look at the production they have coming back. They have more production coming back than Alabama and Georgia. I'll, I'll give them that, even though they are going to have a new quarterback. I guess the FBI just assumes uh, the quarterback is going to be just fine. And you look at what they've done in recent years. They've been near the top every year. So I guess it kind of makes sense. But what I don't understand is is Alabama over Georgia because if you look at these two teams uh, I feel like Georgia has more coming back this year uh, more guys that have played I don't know the actual numbers the stats and what the returning production is uh, but if you look at guys that have actually played Georgia has more guys coming back than Alabama they've also recruited I would say over the last three or four years at a little bit of a higher level than Alabama I haven't looked at those numbers to tell I know Alabama um, at times has out recruited them but it's very similar and so you're talking about a Georgia team that just won the national championship just won back-to-back -back national championships again this is this looks back at the last three years and they have more returning production so I don't see how Georgia is behind Alabama that one doesn't make much sense to me uh, LSU up there at number four Texas this one doesn't make sense to me either because if you look at the last three years Texas has not been very good um, so that just tells you, I guess, how much they've underperformed. If the FBI thinks that this program, this team is this good, and they have not been, you know, haven't shown it the last few years, uh, that really shows you how much they have underperformed. We'll see if that happens again this year. Michigan all the way down number six. You look at their returning production. You know, I don't understand this one at all. Why is this Michigan team, why are they not hired? They've got, they're, I mean, they're right there at the top in returning production. Um, you look at what they've done the last couple of years going to the college football playoff. Maybe it's penalizing them for three years ago because, again, it does look at the last three years. I don't I don't really understand that one. Maybe it's penalizing them a little bit for the recruiting rankings, not quite as high as some of these other teams. Uh, but Michigan there at number six. USC at number seven. Had a good year last year, but, again, if you look at the past three years, you know, that one's, that one's interesting as well. Clemson at number eight. Uh, they've got a lot coming back this year. They should be good. I think that's a pretty pretty fair spot for them. Same thing for Notre Dame. Um, let's go through the rest of the teams. We'll go a little quicker here. Penn State at number 10, a pretty good spot for them. Oklahoma all the way at number 11, despite what they did last year. But again, remember, they go by the last three years, not just last season. And so I think Oklahoma is getting some credit for that, which really makes no sense because they don't even have the same coach. And that's where I'm talking about uh, looking at the last three years. That really just doesn't make much sense. Tennessee at 12, good spot. Oregon 13. Florida State all the way down at 14. But if you look at their last three years, again, last year was, was the only good, really good year out of those three years. 
Utah at 15, pretty fair spot. Ole Miss at 16, I like that. TCU at 17, that's a pretty good spot. Florida, Florida at number 18. I don't know where that one's coming from. Um, I, I, I have nothing. I have nothing for you on that one. Not really sure why they are at number 18. Uh, let's go to 19 through 27. Texas A&M is at number 19. Wisconsin at 20. I think they're getting some credit for the transfers and everything. Uh, Washington at number 21. They should be higher. Texas Tech at 22. Baylor at 23. I've talked about them being potentially a sleeper team in the Big 12. Oregon State at number 24. North Carolina at 25. UCF at 26. That seems a little bit high. And Kansas State seems a little bit low at 27. But all in all, this isn't horrible. These rankings are not horrible as you, as you look through uh, these nine teams. Let's go on now to Kentucky at 28. Miami at 29. Arkansas at 30, Michigan State at number 31. I was just working on their roster not long ago, and I actually think Michigan State's going to be a lot better this year. Problem for them is they play in such a tough division. Uh, you've got Mississippi State number 32, maybe a little low. Minnesota at 33, maybe a little high. Syracuse is a little high at 34. Pittsburgh at 35. You know, NC State behind Syracuse and Pitt makes no sense to me. I think NC State is one of the top four or five teams in the ACC this year. And they've got them all the way down at number 36. But again, Brennan Armstrong coming over, you're you're only going to get half of the production in the in the formula here, which again makes no sense. He's reuniting with his offensive coordinator, so th there's things like that that uh, the computer and, and all this they they just cannot they can't gauge all of this. And I think NC State um, is is definitely underrated here, all the way down at number 36. They've got Iowa at number 37. Oklahoma State at number 38, Auburn at 39, Missouri at 40, UCLA at 41, uh, that seems a little bit low, South Carolina at 42, this is a team I've talked about as being a little bit overrated, a lot of people putting them up in the top 25, uh, FBI kind of agrees with me there, now I don't know that they should be behind Auburn, Missouri, Oklahoma State, but um, again the FBI is picking up on something there, Iowa State at 43, I've talked about this team having a bounce back year, and it looks like they might just do that, although their schedule is really tough. Maryland at 44, Illinois at 45. So those are the top 45 teams. Um, so I'll go through, I'm just going to look through the list here and name off some teams that I think should be at least in the top 45. Uh, teams that, that I think the FBI really missed on. Um, and we'll start with Duke. Duke is number 53, 53 in the FBI. And that's probably because of what they did two and three years ago, although they had a good year last year. If you look at the last three years, they have not been very good, and they don't recruit at the level of some of these other teams. So I guess that makes sense as far as the FPI formula goes, but this team's going to be much better than 53rd. Tulane at 55, uh, that is really low. Um, those are probably the two that really jump out at me. UTSA at 61, this is a team that I think has potential to be uh, maybe a top 25 team. How about Kansas? They're at number 68. 68. Way, way too low. This is another team that I think is not too far away from being a top 25 team. Uh, so those are, are some of the teams that, that I think were way underrated. Again, you go back and look at the teams that I think are overrated. UCF at 26. Uh, I think that's way too high. Florida all the way up at 18. Way too high. Um, Miami at 29, probably too high. Minnesota at 33, that, that might be a decent spot for them. Syracuse, though, at 34, uh, I think they're overrated. Oklahoma State potentially overrated at 38. Auburn at 39. Um, so there are definitely some, some head scratchers here. Again, when you look at the formula and the way they do it, you can kind of see how they're, they're going to run into some issues. I actually read, though, that uh, in games where the FBI and Vegas differ, the FBI is correct 55% of the time. So they've actually, the FBI has actually been better than Vegas. But once you get into the season, they start using all the data from all the games. In the preseason, it's it's really meaningless. I mean, I guess you could take something away from this, but uh, the formula is definitely flawed. And uh, it's very interesting to see though, where, where these teams rank. And sometimes the FBI, has some surprises and they turn out to be right and sometimes they have some surprises and they turn out to be wrong what was your biggest takeaway give me your thoughts on these fbi rankings down in the comments below